Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, this is question number one from the June 2020 um, International A Level Mechanics M1 paper, which also corresponds, well, actually, which is um, also the paper that was uh, actually released in October, because in June all the exams were cancelled, in June 2020. So they used this exam for October 2020, then that's when it was actually sat. So um, anyway, it says two particles P and Q with masses M and 2M respectively are moving in the same direction along the same straight line when they collide directly. Immediately before they collide, P is moving with the speed 4U and Q is moving with the speed U. Immediately after they collide, both particles are moving in the same direction and the speed of Q is four times the speed of P. Find the speed of Q immediately after the collision. Okay, so basically you have two particles, P and Q. So let me just draw like these two circles. That's P and that's Q. All right, now we know that they are moving in the same direction. And of course, they must be moving in the way I've drawn it, in this direction, because P is moving faster than Q. Okay, it's moving faster than Q, so it's going to catch up with Q and then they're going to collide. So this is before the collision. This is the situation before the collision. And after the collision, you, they're both moving in the same direction. And the speed of Q is four times the speed of V. So we can say that this, the, if the speed of, of P, the speed of um, P is V, then the speed of Q is going to be four times V. Okay, the final speed. And of course, they, I guess they're both going to be moving in that same direction like this, but the the answer will tell us anyway, but it's pretty obvious they will be, okay, after the collision. So let's have a look now. At, we, we know basically the way to deal with such a, a question is to use the fact that the momentum is going to be conserved, the conservation of momentum. So the momentum before is equal to the momentum afterwards. So the momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum the momentum after the collision so the momentum before the collision is the mass now the mass of p is m and the mass of q is 2m so before the collision you're going to have m times 4u plus 2m times u and after the collision you're going to have m times V plus 2M times 4V. Okay, so now let's just uh, simplify that. Okay, so that gives us here 4MU plus 2MU equals MV plus 8MV. So that's going to give you 6MU is equal to, that's 9MV so we can say that the m's cancel out and if we divide both sides by 9 we have 6 over 9 u equals v so v is going to be 2 thirds uh, u v is 2 thirds of u okay so they asked us to find the speed of q immediately after the collision um, so the, the speed of q okay so this is v this is the speed of, of p v is the speed of p okay this is the speed of p so v is you know the speed of p after the collision therefore this the speed of q after the collision is four times two thirds u which is eight over three u okay so there's the answer for this question okay there's the answer for part a of this question the speed of Q immediately after the collision. They don't ask us for any um, direction. They just give us, they ask us for the speed of Q. And we know that they, they'd already told us they're both going in the same direction. It's quite obvious it's in the same direction in which they were moving before. They collide and carry on moving. Okay, now it says, um, part B says, find the magnitude of the impulse exerted by Q on P. The magnitude of the in impulse exerted by Q on P. All right, so now, when they collide, they both exert an impulse on each other, which is equal and opposite. So the impulse of exerted by Q on P, okay, 
by Q on P, all right, that means um, basically um, it's going to be when they collide, you know, there's going to be an impulse exerted on P by Q and also an impulse with equal opposite exerted on Q by P. Now, if you find one of them, you find both of them because they have the same magnitude, it's just opposite directions. So the magnitude of the impulse of Q on P is the same as the magnitude of the impulse on of P on Q. Okay, so it doesn't really matter which one you find. So you can just choose either of those two uh, um, particles. Um, for example, I could choose, um, you know, the speed of um, P before the collision and the speed, choose P before and P after if I want to. So you can say that the, the speed of P before, the, the speed of P before the collision, we know from the question was for you. Okay, and the speed of P after the collision we know was um, two-thirds u. Okay, so the impulse is the change in momentum. So it's a mass times a change in velocity. That's what the impulse is. So it's the mass, so the mass of P, as we know, is m. Okay, so the mass of P is m. So you're going to have m times the change in velocity. So it's v minus u so it's two-thirds u minus four u so that's going to give you m times and this is going to be um two over three u minus tw um that's going to be uh, 12 over three u that's the same as four right that gives you minus 10 u over three so minus 10 over three m u Okay, that will be the magnitude of the impulse. Well, that will be the impulse exerted. Um, that's the in impulse that has been exerted on P by Q, because that's the change in momentum of P. So that was a, you know, if we find the change in momentum of P, we found what impulse was, um, you know, applied to P. And of course, we can see we've taken this, this as positive, and the impulse on P is negative. Okay, but they don't care about the sign. They just care about the magnitude. So the magnitude... Is what they want of the impulse is equal to minus is equal to sorry 10 10 over 3 mu let me write that a bit neater you don't include the minus sign because you only care about the magnitude not the direction so 10 over 3 mu and what you would notice is if i had found the change of momentum of q i would have got the same thing and i'll just show you over here because the change in momentum of q in initially Q, the initial speed of Q was U, the final speed of Q was, um, was it 8 over 3 U? Yes, 8 over 3 U. And the mass of Q is 2 M. So the impulse is the mass times the change in velocity, so that it's going to be 2 M, the mass times the change in velocity, which is 8 over 3 U minus U. So this is going to be 2m times, and this is like uh, 3 over 3, 8 over 3 minus 3 over 3 is 5 over 3. So you see we get the same value. We get 10mu over 3. So 10 over 3mu, and here we got 10 over 3mu. This was a negative value because the impulse that Q um, exerts on P is going to act in this direction, and the impulse that P exerts on Q is going to act in this direction. All right, so that's why they're opposite signs but they're the same value. So it doesn't matter whether you work out the change in momentum of Q or the change in momentum of P, they both will have the same magnitude. So if it comes out as negative, you write it as positive because you're only caring about the magnitude. And then it says state clearly the direction of this impulse. Okay, so we just mentioned, we just talked about that. So the direction of this impulse is in the opposite direction in which P is moving. Okay, so you should mention in the opposite, okay, in the opposite, direction to the motion of P. Okay, it's in the opposite direction in which it's moving. So P is moving that same direction the whole time. So it's in the opposite direction to the motion of P. Okay, so that's how you can uh, mention that as the direction of the impulse. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number one. Um, I hope that was clear. Other questions which are from this paper of June, October 2020, 
will be found in the playlist that will appear in this area here. Other questions about uh, momentum and impulse you'll find in the playlist over here. And one question is on momentum and impulse. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And the link on top will take you to another past paper you might be interested in looking at. Thank you for watching and see you soon.